Well guys, welcome to another video. Today, it turns out John and I both had an extra day in Vegas after the Indodrone 17. Mm -hmm. So we did breakfast and wondered what to do next. <laughs> well, obviously, uh, I got invited. We, we, you know, come out here and do some fun stuff. We'll try to fly some ships around. We're gonna take a look at um, some of the new things that I haven't seen yet. So you've already uh, got and the, I haven't the... seen what you've got in your boat. Exactly. So um, just kind of a fun, let's check it out. Let's go do some flying. Let's see how things perform. Uh, this isn't really review, review. Just did, did again, Bo and I, we've been good friends. We're gonna go out and just have some fun flying some stuff around, but we might as well just take a look at some of the functionalities and some of the things that are out there. And as far as these three luck, systems We're not gonna go. break anything today because some of these are actually better units. They're prototype testers. Yeah. The first one we have here, we've been going around the show and I have a early unit of the Power Eye, which is a micro four thirds interchangeable lens camera. So I flew it last week. I was very surprised how easy it was to fly. Mm -hmm. John, you get to fly today. Yeah, I'll try to test it today and see how it might fit into maybe some of the uh, more industrial um, type setups that we are known for at Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems to try to work it into that, something like that. Well, let's you try know, it out. Take a look. And it of course comes in a kind of a oversized carry-on case. Yeah, it's got these nice little wheels on the back so you can roll it around. I did like that, being able to transport it around and do some stuff. So that was really awesome. So, but well, we're gonna skip the review part, but mm -hmm. if there's something we don't like, I think we should just... Pretty much say it? Yes. Yeah. Spit okay. it out. Well, I do like the way it all kind of fits in here. It's really quite uh, impressive how... Uh, now, what I found out right away, we need to flip it upside down. Okay. So just pull it up and flip it over. Flip, pull it up and flip it over. Yeah. Let these fall. That's exactly it, because then we can immediately, we need to make sure they're all the way down, uh -huh. and each one needs a good tuck. Like a lot of the systems that are coming out today, one of the things about them uh, is trying to keep them as compact as possible. So this is a this is a fairly compact little system. That, it's very uh, tight in that regard. Yeah. Now you've got two legs for your side. Awesome. And they actually have a slot up in the fit there. So they just kind of go in, you turn till they fit, and then you twist the lock ring down. Twist the lock ring down. Of course. I can't emphasize this enough with, with drones with lockable rings on the arms. Mm -hmm. Test them one more time always. Oh yeah. Just sure because. Good. And they're, they're Now they have it unfold. Big foam block up here. That needs to come off. So how are you liking the, flo the foam block as far as just being able to get out of there? I mean, it's not terrible, but I no, guess. No, it went pretty easily. Yeah. So you get the battery. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing with this battery is it splits in two. So that it can be air transported. You have got two 3S's 9,000 milliamp that goes together to oh, literally six like S comes apart. 9,000 milliamp. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So it's kind of a little tricky, but. Mm -hmm. And that goes in the back. You want me to turn that? Yeah, let's turn that around for everyone to kind of see that. You get in that little, ah, nice little door open. right there it's probably just me I like the way the door looked but I could do without the door I could probably do without the door uh, it's probably something easy again on the industrial side that guys could easily break that off you know open close open close yeah you do this one too many times but yeah. it's very firm in there I don't I'm actually not worried about it coming out by accident yeah. maybe, maybe a little like a turn lock instead of something like that, that or uh, corn. yeah Something simple. You didn't tighten this arm. Well, see, this is why we're checking to make sure that things are done right. I was, I was actually testing you. <laughs> I guess I passed at least that one time. There you go. I'm testing all your <laughs> Okay. So here's the radio. Uh-huh. Uh, form factor's pretty nice. Not, uh, not terrible on that. Um, are you missing something there? Well, I am. Like Looks antennas. like I'm missing uh, antennas or screens or, ah, there we go. Antennas. Right there. Yeah. So this is only for our... This is actually the transmitter up on top there. Ah. So you have to plug that in and you have a PPM cable that goes on the side of that. I see. That actually just plugs right into the side and so all your uh, transmission comms are happening here. Um, not too bad on the blade. Yeah. Very nice. So that's pretty much it. Then you need to make sure that's turned on together with that. Mm -hmm. And then we can power that up. Got it. 
Well, that's uh, how do we see what it sees? Is there a... We'll put, just put an iPad or an iPhone on there. Mm -hmm. Is it a wireless connection? Yes, it has a hotspot in here. Mm -hmm. And I found the, my phone and iPad kind of detects it right away as soon mm -hmm. as we not have it. And other preferred... And its own app, I'm supposing? Yes, yeah. it does. Okay. All right. It's still a little bit better because the color balances are color balance one, color balance two, caliber. I have no idea what they are. Ah. So they're still rewriting that app, I'm sure. Okay, excellent. Very nice. All righty. So I guess we should um, go fly this thing. Yeah, let's go take it for a flight and see how she does. I'm yeah. pretty excited about it. We'll do a quick launch and we'll come back and tell you guys what we think or don't think. Automatic landing gear. So I always test right off the get-go, and I usually test the machine, doesn't matter who makes it. If they have the different modes, I always like to typically take off in what they, you know, normally call Addy mode or manual mode. That way I can actually just test the way it feels. Right now I'm actually flipped over to GPS since we did initially do that test, and I just want to make sure that I have something to default to. So, you know, as we double check and make sure that it's stable in GPS, we automatically become a little spoiled by GPS thinking that we don't have to think very hard but for me as a pilot I like to just make sure that it is going to hold well within a position or space during a yaw turn or any kind of movements and then as well moving and feeling how the actual ship feels moving around and motions and movement and how much control I need to give it in any orientation depending on what I'm doing. So it's always something that I just practice to make sure I feel comfortable with. And currently, like I said, we are in GPS, so it's fairly easy right there. It's not a really speedy machine. It's not, again, made to be very fast uh, with the GPS in the GPS mode control. bring it back over to Addy and just kind of fly her out in the way and see how she handles in a little bit more forward motion. So we're back in Addy. You can see the drift moving. And let's just kind of pull her out in the way and see how she feels. I usually watch for how they track and how they're tracking and moving in Addy as well as in GPS. Let's do a quick flyby here and see how well. Let's get down by the fence here. Water. I got her. So I'm going to switch back over to GPS here. And watch that hold. There we go. Get a hold. Well, not a bad flight at all. It's, uh, you know, as far as my review goes, um, just kind of how it feels. Uh, I do like the, the, the prop feel on it there. It was pretty solid. Radio feels pretty good in the hands. I don't think that is a um, terrible feel. Of course, I'm a pincher when I fly instead of a um, just a thumber. So the button orientation, kind of a smaller little bit button. I, I wish that was just a little bit taller so I could feel that, but that's just because the way I fly is reaching up to grab that button. So this is just the way I fly as far as like 3D planes and helicopters go. But um, the button itself is actually pretty hard to switch into, into its position, which is good and bad. So you don't accidentally hit it into a, a mode that you're not comfortable with. Um, as far as it looking in the air and kind of keeping orientation with it, I didn't have much problem with that. The shape of it is actually pretty good. We didn't fly too far away, but as far as the connection went, video feed was coming through pretty nice and clean. So, so far overall, not, not bad at all. So I think it was a pretty good flight.
Well, John, that went pretty well. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm always the one saying, uh, as long as you don't crash, it went pretty well. Though. Yeah, usually if you don't crash, it's usually a good flight. So, um, no. Seemed to be a relatively uh, good little uh, flight and ship. Uh, the modes, the stability of the bird, um, very, very good. Uh, I did uh, mention a little bit about the radio itself, um, not so much the machine, but a little bit just ergonomically how it feels in my hands. Um, I, you know, as far as like sometimes with with other uh, manufacturers that make stuff, um, and we always use DJI as the gold standard. Is you know as far as like uh, how things are are feeling and whatnot. This the, the radio is a plastic cover. You know when you get into um, the ships that might be in that 2,000, 3,000 range, you can feel, you know, that Inspire radio and the M200 radio, those, those definitely feel a little bit more hardy in your hands, you know? Right. And, and for some people, that does mean a lot, you know? And, and uh, others, you know, they don't feel like they're controlling it with something that's kind of a little bit more cheaper plastic or, you know, and that can be a, you know, of concern. And just, it's, a, it's all up here, up in their mind, but it's just one of the smaller things that you could see. No issues and problems with the Wi-Fi connection. Again, clean feed that was coming through. We have uh, an older iPad you mentioned, right? So this is like I think an original iPad Mini. Um, wow. So it's very old. It's actually so old that DJI won't use it. Wow, it, it there you go. It will not play the current DJI app. So so uh, so that that does you know kind of allow you know a lot of people that do call in to me. Um, have uh, older iPads, if you will, and older to a lot of this industry is only like a year. If you know, and that now yeah. it's old, now it's ancient because it's a year old. <laughs> yeah, so, this is more like three or four years old. Yeah, at least. so actually having that connect up and still talking to the uh, Wi Fi system as well as through the ship and the video feed, um, that's actually a really big bonus, I would think, uh, being able to use the older um, uh, it, systems. It doesn't you know? outdate your stuff. Yeah, and interestingly, with my iPad, I think we would playing together I was flying my iPad when my old iPad stopped working because I was flying this one originally on my Inspire 1 mm -hmm. and with an update all of a sudden my iPad was obsolete yeah so and that's when I went out and got my bigger latest iPad sure so so and that thing is now that was a couple of years ago up here the, the other thing here is of course we have a micro four thirds camera sitting down here mm-hmm so and a full-on micro four thirds camera and I'm sure you're gonna be uh, if you haven't done so already, I've done a lot of uh, um, photography and kind of doing some things off of this camera as well as video just to see performance. The quality is coming out really nice and we tested the dynamic range to about 11 and a half stop. Uh -huh. So that's legit. Uh -huh. One of the coolest features that I kind of like is the twist and go. So you dial this dial and it moves the camera in and out of the sleeve to balance lenses. Oh. So if you change lens, you just dial the dial until you get to the next Kind of a smart idea instead of having to throw a bunch of pennies and weights and all kinds of funny things to get your, your uh, gimbal balance. So Double-sided tape and quarters is how I do my Inspire. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm pretty much <laughs> I've seen that all over the internet, so that's kind of how that works. So kind of a, a, a smart process there to think about that. Um, innovative, you know, uh, it... I didn't when I initially I think, I, think, I think one of the reasons DJI didn't do that I think the camera probably is a little heavier because it's move have a moving part and that is a reason to not make it moving mm -hmm. but the other day I switched lenses three times balanced them in less than 30 seconds and mm -hmm. was ready to go again mm. yeah not so, bad at all so I'm not saying it's better but um, image -wise, it, it, it was thought it's of how's that to an Inspire one ish yeah yeah Inspire and then we got one. the but what I didn't mention before, there's a pilot camera up here. Mm -hmm. So on the iPad, you can tap and you can switch from this camera to the pilot camera mm -hmm. view. Yeah, it's rare that I ever use that. Um, very, very rare that I personally use if that. If you can but... see the aircraft, yeah. I find it's easy. If you can't see it, then we are really far out for a commercial job. Oh yeah, absolutely. But it does allow the camera operator to be pointed this way and you can still see what, where you're going. Mm -hmm. Well, the mechanics of the landing gear seem fairly solid that, you know, um, this, you know, kind of just designed the amount of flex that they had as they were coming in didn't seem like it could handle a pretty good, you know, solid uh, landing. Um, so I, there's a lot of things that, that I watch as I'm rolling through, yeah. as I'm testing something uh, to kind of give a little bit of feedback on my thoughts on it. And uh, it's very small little things, but, you know, they're all tacking up in my mind so on what, how they what, work. What do you dislike the most? Um, I, you know, I still, 
a lot of the a lot of the designs that are coming out besides them you know let, let's just be real here a quad is a quad is a quad you got four motors you got four props you got four legs you got a body and you have some landing gear right what really defines kind of like what everything is for most people is you know most being the camera. is the camera the camera itself so even though you can make this look really spiffy and nifty the the middle center body section it's all about functionality and that's that's number one so um that, that i was talking about that the other day because it is actually an aluminum structure in the center yeah that then has been clad with plastic and i was saying for all i care they could lose all the plastic and just keep the aluminum structure yeah and and like i said i mean if it makes it more you know aerodynamic for some reason you know, i'll just take a quick look at this back end and kind of look into this fan you know this little stab design we know the, what those these are two for stabs are actually the ultrasound we know exactly what they're for and what they're designed for to put them in a little bit of a package like this or yeah. how it was mo how it was thought out in the design um the little shark fin sticking down or rudder sticking down uh you know these are just easily things that get broken off is what i'm saying this these kinds of things that are easy to get okay, cracked or broken yep we need the antennas so yep those we can't really and do. so you just you know when you get into that utilitarian design and something that's got to be kind of hardy to go in i mean we're, let's be honest firefighters police guys they're not really nice to the equipment it's not nice because they they don't want to be it's just that they are got to get it got to get it going they got to get it ready well, they, they got to move locations they're out there to save people they're not out there to save the paint job right you're right and so you know when we did when you did bring up a couple of times about the uh being able to just get rid of something not worry about it. it's not super expensive it's because it's disposable that's kind of what goes into these things to make them really expensive is all of this stuff you know is all this ideas to make little fins and little pieces and little parts and well, so, little things so, so we both agree that it's too much plastic yeah i think it i think no. it could probably be you know if it was to be put into that utility space that i work in as well as you know i, I like cameras that's in the utility space yeah but we don't like the plastic what do you like about it i i did like the way she flew she uh you know i always it sits nice in there doesn't it, it does um it wasn't challenging to to feel that uh even in the uh addy mode in uh basically their their manual mode um that that was a comfortable it wasn't it wasn't too much you know so turning you know going into addy gives you a little bit more aggressive movement yeah. in some cases but it didn't seem overly done um, i like in this one you flip to addy and it's not like it's immediately is leaving yeah it just kind of hangs there yep and you can see that it starts drifting but it's not out of control it's just sure. slight movement yeah but overall you know i this this probably you know besides a little bit of the um ergonomic you know feel that's that's not you know for everybody but you know i fly a little bit with plastic a little bit um i did notice on firing up that these are pretty tight, tight you know so so you do need to Get a little bit of vibration you do need to, yeah right when they fire up before they start to to get going so any folding prop does have that kind of a uh, uh problem if you will if people don't actually fold open these up and get them out and can cause some early vibration in the ship when she starts up so just something to look at when you're doing that and uh other than that i, I think it was pretty awesome i did i did like the fact that when i went to go pick it up it was just right there on the it side has a carry handle on it both sides literally does you know just pick it up and and there you go instead of trying to grab it from the top and lift it up yeah you know so so all our i mean so we basically we have a micro four thirds platform that comes with a stock lens for 3500 mm -hmm. it's not bad so another 3500 or so and and uh not not bad at all so that's yeah another 3500 yeah flat aircraft <laughs> so we looked at several 3500 dollar price points today yes we did and 35k and the 35,000. <laughs> there you I mean, go it does but for the price i was pretty happy with this no not bad at all so um and, and i did notice because landing gear servos always are the ones you bust and i like how it's for allen wrench screws right in on the side here yeah. you can pop them out easy module change yeah i like stuff that's the things that will break properly mm -hmm. is going to be easy to fix ah that's that's a good call yeah do like it overall um i don't know a number for me i i i'd probably be in that eight and a half to nine range right now of uh other oh, considering it's 30 considering yeah the if price it was 10, of it 000, we wouldn't get to five yeah yep but at 3500 i agree yeah it's right there so 
Well, there you have it. That's again John McBride from Rocky Mountains Unmanned Aerial Systems. That's mm -hmm. a long mouthful. Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems. There you have yep, it. Yep, there you go. I always and have to remind Bo. <laughs> we put his phone number on the video here and also make sure you click down the corner of the screen, click subscribe, and we'll see you in some more videos and also copy paste the link from this videos out in user groups or wherever you hang out on Facebook mm -hmm. and share these videos with other people. Awesome. Thank you guys. All right, thanks guys. Let's go fly more stuff. Let's do it.